In the unresolved problem segment tonight, two important stories. The nuclear deal with Iran and ISIS demanding $30 million to free hundreds of Christian hostages. But first to Iran. Congressional opposition to a new deal grows louder by the day, and the Obama administration is struggling to get Congress to butt out. Congress will have to vote to lift, ultimately, some of the sanctions which are congressionally mandated. So we all understand the process here, and I think we just need to be serious in a way that does not interfere with the president's ability to pursue the foreign policy interests of our nation. And some members of Congress don't exactly see it that way, with Senator John McCain even saying that Iran might be right over claims that the White House isn't telling the whole truth about the deal's terms. John Kerry must have known what was in it and yet chose to interpret it in another, in, a, in another way. It's probably in black and white that the, that the Ayatollah is probably right. John Kerry is delusional. Joining us now with reaction from Washington, Lieutenant Colonel Ralph Peters of Fox News, strategic analyst. Colonel Peters, John McCain, uh, by all accounts, is right in that we see a very different deal with the, the one or two page that, that the Kerry, uh, the Senator Kerry, Secretary of State Kerry gave us upon leaving the deal versus what the Ayatollah has put out in Iran. Well, the human capacity for self-delusion is almost infinite. And Obama and Kerry are champions. Eric, the Iranians negotiate. We beg. And the Iranians are really, really good negotiators. They're tough. Now, part of what you're seeing or hearing with what Ayatollah Khamenei is saying is negotiating strategy. Um, their foreign minister, Mohammad uh, Javad Zarif, he's the good cop. Ayatollah Khamenei is a bad cop. So um, the foreign minister could go back to Lausanne or wherever they hold the next round of talks and say, oh, to say to Kerry, oh, gee, John, you know, I'd like to help you out, but the Ayatollah says I can't do that. So that's part of it. But to me, the fundamental issue is that these are people, Kerry and company, just aren't serious negotiators. The Iranians, the Persians at the core of Iran, they have a, a bizarre merchant culture. They are born hagglers. And, right. you know, they, they, they look at Obama and they size up their customers. And they know Obama wants to buy this Persian rug. No matter what, he's fixated on buying it. People are telling him, that's a fake, don't buy that rug. But he just wants to buy it. And by God, they're going to get the highest price they can. Colonel, I, I, do a side-by-side -side comparison of the two deals, or at least the two countries' ideas of the deal. Under inspections, the U.S. says they're permanent. Um, the Iran Iranians say they're temporary. And this one right here, sanctions. The U.S. says the sanctions are phased in, where Iran says, the Ayatollah, Supreme Leader says, he's not doing a deal unless those sanctions are lifted before he signs it. I got to tell you, these aren't, deals aren't even close on paper. Well, I don't think the paper is very specific. I, I think there is a tacit, if not overt, agreement between Kerry and, uh, and Zarif that, you know, okay, we're going to agree to disagree, but, and we'll spin Carl, ours and you spin Carl, yours. Did, did Kerry and company lie to us? Did they lie to the American people? Did they have a secret, a, de a separate deal, or the one that the Iranians believe it is, and that's the real deal? And they just want to deal so badly back here. They said, don't worry, I'll tell the American people what I need to tell them to get them on board. Of course they're lying. I mean, next question. Of course they're lying. Kerry lies. Obama lies. Secretary Clinton lied when she was Secretary of State. My question to you would be, when in the course of these negotiations or our engagement in the Middle East has the White House told the truth about the ISIS being the JV team, about Yemen being a success story, about, uh, <laughs> about what we were going to do in Syria or Libya? I mean, this is an administration that has lied so long about so much, they no longer have a grip on the truth. Okay. Colonel, uh, by the way, it, uh, I'm, after President Obama leaves office, I'm going to have a poker game. You, me, President Obama, John Kerry, but we don't want Zarif. We don't want the Ira no, Iranian no, negotiator. No, no, he no. can stay away from our table. Uh, the other story, the other topic, quickly, only about a minute or so. ISIS demanding $30 million for hostage, Christian hostages. What do we do there? Well, our position is correct if you're not personally involved. Our position is we do not negotiate with or pour with terrorists or pay ransom for hostages. And as long as you don't have one of your relatives as a hostage, that sounds pretty good. Uh, the problem is this. We have this devil's dilemma, whereas if we don't, if nobody pays a ransom, they will graphically and brutally film the murder of hundreds of Christians. If somebody does pay a ransom, 
They will kidnap more Christians and more Zahidis and more Zoroastrians and more Muslims who don't measure up. So in the short term, you've got to take the pain. You've got to say, no, we don't pay the ransom. And anyway, the bottom line here is the way you avoid paying ransoms to people like the Islamic State militants is to kill them before they take hostages. You know, and I'm tired. I'm sick and tired, Eric, of people saying there's no military solution. We have never tried a military solution. We have sent our troops, whether under Bush or Obama, into the Middle East with so many restrictions upon them, so many lawyers on the battlefield, mm -hmm. so much fear of um, uh, any collateral damage that we have never tried a military option. You kill these suckers, that's how you stop All the kidnapping. Right, we're going to have to leave it right there, Colonel Peterson. Thank you very much.